teachers create strategies, chefs create recipes, and scientists, they create formulas. And my guy, Kevin, he is going to give us the formula for a Super Bowl win for the Baltimore Ravens. He said, hey, Ravens, since we do not have a number one wide receiver, and it's too late to get one this season, here is the formula for a Super Bowl run. Offense. Short passes and multiple receiver and running backs hands. Let the other team's defenses get tired, uh, ta- to, too tired to tackle uh, the players for the first half. More under center play actions and runs. Yes, yes, yes. Second half, run it down the other team's throats. Use Mike Davis if you don't have Gus or JK. Shaking my head. Defense, continue to get better with QB pressure and replace away with a job. Oh, LOL. What do you think? You, you've been getting on away all season. I mean, a lot of people have, though. But um, I don't know what it's been, man. He just, I don't know. And I know some people, oh, well, he's been getting held a lot. Well, hey, you, you got to find a way to break free. Because there ain't no way. Like, like Justin Hughes has been going off. He ain't even been playing every game. Um, So I, I'm not sure exactly what it is with Adafi away. I haven't sat there and just been laser focused on him and been watching his every single move or whatnot. But I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is with him, what's going on. Uh, but back to the part about the offense, the short passes, man, and having the multiple receivers on the field, I agree. The up-tempo passing game, the short, quick passing game, it helps a lot. It helps get Lamar in more of a rhythm. It helps get the receivers in more of a rhythm. It keeps the offense moving and keeps it going, and then it can wear out those defenses. And then in the second half, like, of course you want to use your running game in the first half too, but really in the second half you want to be able to use that thing so you can close it out. You can close it out. It's been a theme with the Ravens, especially since Gus Edwards had been back. I know he obviously missed the game against the Saints, but for the three games in a row that the Ravens won in the second half, their run game has been able to close it out, and it's helped out the Ravens so much. And then uh, with the run game, if your running game is going good, that helps the play-action game, especially the play-action game under center. Because under center, the play-action game is more deadly, in my opinion, than in a pistol or in the shotgun or whatnot. So those are some you, – you, you got a good strategy there, my friend. You, you got a really good one. So we appreciate you being the scientist. But he wasn't done yet. He said one more thing. Uh, shout out to Geno Stone. He's getting better and better each week. We're definitely not keeping Chuck Clark next season. No knock on Chuck Clark. It's actually speaking on how great Geno Stone is playing. Um, and I, I think with Kyle Hamilton too. Like, I mean, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Like this, this year, they were like, all right, hey, Chuck, we'll keep you around. Even though Chuck requested, he requested a trade. that I want out of here. But Ravens are like, nah, we, we ain't trading you. you you're going to be the one person that requests a trade that we ain't going to give it to. Everybody else, we get on their trade. But right now, you know you? No, uh, it ain't happening. Um, so we'll see next year, though. Uh, but he said uh, the Ravens remaining schedule should make their team prepared for the playoffs. And the Bills don't have a win in their division yet. Ooh, there's something right there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Ravens' previous schedule, the schedule they done been through, um, that, they were battle-tested for sure in that one. Um, and it's crazy. that <laughs> The teams with the winning records, Ravens lost to them. Um, the teams that they faced, when they, when they faced those teams and they had a winning record, they lost it. Like, they, they lost to the Bills, they lost to the Dolphins, and they lost to the Giants. So... Just something to think about. I know the Bengals have a winning record now, but I don't think when the Ravens played them, they had a winning record. But the, the, the teams with the best records that the Ravens played, they lost to all of them. So, yeah, they, they, they got some work to do. Uh, and the last part of his question, he said they are listening. Uh, run more rollouts, play action, quick hitches. And why don't they use Mike Davis in this game? Uh, get the Saints defense tied and run the ball down their throat. Also give Tylen Wallace a quick hitch. See what your receivers can do. Yeah, Tyler Wallace, he was inactive uh, for that game um, against the uh, the Saints. Uh, Mike Davis, Mike Davis, is, they don't use him in a run game at all. Ever since that Dolphins game, they said, nope, we ain't doing it no more. Not not at all. And every time he's out there, he is. they don't give him any handoffs. He, you know he's not getting the ball handed off to him. Like on the Saints game, they gave him a pass. Lamar like ended up throwing it off to him in, in, in a little pass. Uh, but he is not to run the ball. It's a no-no running the ball with Mike Davis. Ravens are they like they they done with Mike Davis uh, in the run game, and, and that's been clear as day. But as far as more rollouts, yeah, they've been doing that more. 
They've been doing that more, which is a good thing. You can do it even more. Play action. We just talked about that. Uh, quick hitches and uh, yeah, this that's exactly what they did. Get the Saints defense tied and run the ball down their throat. That's exactly what they did in the second half to finish the game. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. And keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. And to keep us going, next question came from my guy Gold Morano. Would JK accept the third? We did it again, Engraven. Am I happy to go into the bye week at six and three? Absolutely. Do I feel confident that after nine weeks of play that the pass offense is gelling and improving to the level it needs to be for a championship run? Not exactly. How about you? No, no. And and I think um with a lot of the the receiver talk and all that, the passing game talk, um, I don't think many people's uh, their biggest fear, concern, worry was for the regular season. No, it's come playoff time. But well, for me, I can only speak for myself. For me, my thing that I was saying with the Ravens passing game, it's it's a dangerous type of passing game because uh, since the volume is so low, everything got to be on point. We've been talking about everything got to be on point. If one thing is messed up, oh, wow, it, it, it looks really bad. It, it, it can look really bad. If one thing is messed up, if one part of it slips up, makes a mistake, miss, what it, it, everything is emphasized that much because the volume uh, is, is super, super low. Um, so with that, when you go into the playoffs, in the playoffs, teams, they will sell out. To do everything to take away whatever your strongest uh, option is, whatever your strongest uh, characteristic of your team is. For the Ravens on offense, it's the run game. So this is why, uh, for me, this is part of one of the biggest reasons why I wanted the Ravens to really invest in wide receiver like that. Because of playoff time. Because, again, regular season, they already show, hey, regular season, they can get by. We know if regular season Lamar's healthy, they'll be a okay. But it's playoffs. That's when you need you definitely need more other guys to make those plays. Guys got to step up. But this is also why I wanted the volume to improve and the philosophy to really change because of playoff time. Because playoff time, like regular season, this, this is nice. Six and three, nice with Ravens sitting right now, nice. But playoff time is is where. The biggest concern is for me. But anyway, he said, uh, would you agree that timing and synchronizing must be improved during the bye week? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, timing, I know with Lamar, he's been missing some stuff. He's been missing some throws uh, and, and some simple throws, too. Now, uh, like last night with the, in the Saints game, um, some of the throws he missed, look at where they came after. <laughs> like, it was like this guy, he, uh, he had to escape like 50 Saints defenders. Uh, and then he, after he finally escaped him, then he made the throw and he, he threw so he, he threw one behind the Josh Oliver, threw another one behind the Demarcus Robinson. Um, was there another one too? Was it, was that? Oh no, he overthrew one to, to to likely, and I think those those were the only three that were just a little that well, yeah, those were the only three where he just like missed them, like just straight up missed. Um, but he said, how do you feel about the ability to make big plays down the field? I don't know. We ain't been seeing big plays from the Ravens down the field. We just, we ain't been seeing them. We ain't been seeing them. They've been taking a few shots here and there, but we just ain't been seeing it. They, they've been more of a grinded out type of offense. Um... And hopefully with Deshaun Jackson, if them hammies could be right, <laughs> like uh, then Devin Du, well, not really, well, Duvernay maybe, but um, uh, the big plays down the field is just, it ain't been a part of his offense. Not recently, at least. It's They've been missing big time. Um, that could help a lot. That could add another element to the offense. Uh, it's up to Lamar. It's up to Giro. It's up to the receivers. Um, but it's just it, they just haven't been there. 
Um, but he said, is a one dimensional offense run dominant easier to defend or does the element of the unknown confuse defenses, keep them on their heels, tie them out and wear them down? <laughs> so, so I see what you did there. That was like one of them questions where you set it up to where you, you we all know the answer. But you just wanted to get that point across. I appreciate that. He said, my original my uh, original intended question actually pertains to the running back room uh, as you so accurately stated last week Gus Edwards is without question the team's top running back and that fact is quite evident when the bus puts his cleats on the field uh, he's a true game changer but with a dependable capable and effective Kenyon Drake backing him up is J.K. Dobbins spot on the depth chart as a starting running back in jeopardy would Dobbins demand a trade if dropped to RB3 now in his third season he'll only have next season to prove his value is it me or does EDC have a propensity to draft often injured players oh um mm, wow that just I know for a lot of his top guys that's how it's been working out like um mm, but uh with JK as far as him if he was dropped to number three running back, I mean, it's all about going with the hot hand. So when J.K. does come back, because you still have Justice Hill there too, you have Drake, you have Gus, obviously. Gus, he, Gus should be the number one back, but um, Ravens, a lot of times they don't really have a number one back. But one thing they've been doing this year, which has been so much better, thank you so much, keep it up, please. They've been riding with the hot hand at running back for the most part. They've been riding with the hot hand and running back. And I, I, I just appreciate that so much because it makes such a big difference and they need to keep it up. So it would, I don't even think it would be that JK would be demoted to RB3. It would just all depend on who got the hot hand at that time. Why the hate? Next question came from my guy, David. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope the fam is straight. Oh, yeah, we're doing good. Appreciate you. Why the hate? Why did the flock turn on Project Pat? What did he do? If you ask me, it's another sign of us getting spoiled and not understanding the strength and the root of our team. Uh, running the football. Pat Ricard is one of our biggest weapons. Why? Losing Ricard in any sense, fashion, would potentially stall the offense. Hear me out. What if scenario coming? All right. So first, the first question about uh, Pat Ricard, uh, the flock turning on Project Pat or whatnot. I don't even think it's necessarily people turning on Project Pat. I think it's people um, just wondering about a lot of the situational football and just wondering why he's out there a lot more than say another receiver uh, a lot of times and and in situations where it's clutch time this could be a third down and long it's like all right right was may add like two receivers out there sometimes even one receiver out there but <clears throat> pat ricard is always out there so i think it's just the usage and we know that with pat ricard He's an extra offensive lineman. He's he's a blocker uh, for Lamar, for the running backs or whatnot. Uh, so he is, he is obviously a big part of their offense. And I remember when they first re-signed Pat Ricard, I was like, okay, well, the philosophy is going to be staying the same. Because if it was changing, then Pat Ricard would have been gone. Um, so that was a big indication of that. Uh, but anyway, I, I think that's what it is. Just... The, a, a lot of times the situational use of Pat Ricard And sometimes it could just be looking at the numbers Looking at the percent that he's out there on the field Versus a lot of other guys Especially when it comes to receivers um, and, and the fact that the passing game has been What it has been uh, But anyway let's continue with your question He said can the Ravens still win if They lose wide receiver one Yes they lose tight end one Yes they lose RB one Yes they lose RB two Yes they lose tight end one and wide receiver one Yes they lose what, what wide receiver RB one and tight end one, yes. What about if they lose wide receiver one, tight end one, RB one, and RB two? Yes. Even crazier, could the Ravens be top of the division without wide receiver one? <laughs> without wide receiver one, RB one, RB two, uh, RB three, left tackle, and the entire defense, yes. Oof. That's a confusing read right there, but let's keep going. He said, now, does the Ravens offense still move the ball without fullback one in any of those scenarios? Nobody can fill in for Pat if he lose Pat. Well, I think Nick Boyle, I think he would be able to. It'd be a little different. But anyway, uh, he said uh, Lamar would get killed and the run lanes would shut. Point is, we can win without the pass. We are dead without the run and defense. We all know we need to stick to our bread, the run game and butter, Project Pat. We do need more offensive creativity, but I feel like you can do more with the same offense than we do. But the identity doesn't need to change. 
again, playoff time, man. Play playoff time is going to answer this question. Uh, as far as the identity, in my opinion, the identity, the philosophy, all that, because uh, that that's that's the biggest concern for me. Anyway, he said, imagine if Chubb ran behind Ricard. Imagine if Henry ran behind Ricard. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Kenneth Walker, Damon Pierce, Brees Hall, Joe Mixon, Pollard, Zeke. Come on, flock. This isn't a shootout offense like y'all desperately want it to be, and it doesn't need to be. Our wide receivers are good enough for the eight targets they'll get our offense is one of one and that's an advantage that travels sorry for the long message god bless oh that's see that that's where it gets tricky that's where it gets tricky and i think that's another part of so many ravens fans frustration it's like yeah we know ravens can run the ball which is nice but it's like you you got you got a lamar jackson you got a Lamar Jackson and the way that the offense is constructed is not constructed like they have a Lamar Jackson. That's one of the biggest frustrations really over the years. Um, and it's like the emphasis continues to be put on a run game, run game, run game, run game, run game. And as far as the passing game, it's like, oh, okay, it's it's enough. It's enough. But, again, regular season, great. But playoff time, that run game, it don't be the same. It don't be the same. And the pass game, that's when you really need to rely on a pass game. You need to have a pass game ready. Not to say the run game still can't do its thing. I mean, it hasn't done its thing in the playoffs, but you you need a pass game to be ready. And we just haven't been. Next question came from my guy, Ronald. He said, hope you and the fam are doing great. We sure are. Hope you are too, Ronald. He said, why not bring back Makai Polk? Well, I mean, he ain't, ain't he still on the practice? No, they released him from the practice squad. No, they, they got Deshaun Jackson and Andy Isabella, baby. So what, what they need a young, tall, athletic wide receiver for? Next question came from my guy, Greg, and be more. He said, Raquan Smith, potential consequences. Uh, I'm so happy that Raquan Smith is a Raven. I think a wide receiver move might have been great, too, but it unfortunately didn't happen. But maybe EDC did try. I don't know. However, probably wouldn't have tried too much with any of the two notable guys I'm remembering on a deadline day. Anyways, with Chase Claypool, who was highly unlikely, Steelers would have traded a guy like him to a division rival, and Calvin Ridley, who's a conditioner trade and I don't think can play this year because of the betting I'm not sure on his whole punishment so I'm not too upset that Ravens didn't trade for those wide receivers at least uh, I believe the Ravens will try to sign both Roquan Smith and Lamar Jackson to extensions or sign one and franchise tag the other if both get extensions it's going to be likely top three money contracts at both positions maybe even top one for both and I want this but there will be a cost. Unless there's a team-friendly deal or restructuring on contracts, it's hard to see important guys like Marcus Peters, Calais Campbell, if he don't retire, and maybe even Ronnie Stanley. Oh, and maybe even Ronnie Stanley, Marlon Humphrey, and Mark Andrews might have to be let go next year, or maybe the year after next for Humphrey, for Humphrey and Andrews. Yes, cap room is probably overrated as teams always figure out ways around the cap, but it still exists. I mean, I wouldn't even worry about the year after right now, but... Ronnie Stanley ain't going nowhere next year. Marlon Humphrey ain't going nowhere next year. Mark Andrews ain't going nowhere next year. Calais Campbell, he could retire. Marcus Peters, I don't think he'll be back. But them, them three, Mark, Marlon, and Ronnie, yeah, they ain't going nowhere. But anyway, he said um, the cap still exists. Top linebacker QB money will be a lot on the cap. Plus, if Isaiah likely continue to improve and look great for the money, likely is a cheaper option over Mark the next few seasons. And that's why I mentioned Mark Andrews possibly going and Makari and Falele might not be bad options at left tackle. Though I love Stanley, they are cheaper too. Yeah, St Stanley, Stanley ain't going nowhere. Mark Andrews ain't going nowhere. So you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, he said Ravens could find a way to not lose all those guys, but we'll have to wait and see. LJ is definitely a top priority, but for Roquan, is signing him worth it uh, for who the team could lose for him to get an extension? I know this is long, but I'll try to be sure the next time have a wonderful day. Yeah, I, I think um, I just yeah, I, I Mark, Mark Andrews, Marlon Humphrey, Ronnie, right? nah, those, those dudes, they are as safe as you can possibly be. Um, the the biggest person that I'm worried about right now losing, uh, and this was even before Roquan Smith, 
uh, would be Lamar. The last question on this episode came from the Artwell. He said, Hey, Graven, thank you for your commitment to keeping a clean, healthy, fun platform for all Ravens fans and fans of football. Uh, watching you from the car to the porch to the den to the vacation <laughs> holidays, man. You really come such a long way with this. It's inspiring to all who watch, a true pioneer. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you. And, and thank you, Team Keep It Clean, for being the best fan base ever. It is truly a great feeling to know there's a place for us to talk football like this. Uh, before we begin, let's just take a moment to remember the great Ravens teams of the past, the ones who won, the ones who lost, our most and least favorite moments. Ah, Engraven, I ask you to walk with me through this one. We're headed to the year 2006. We finished 13 and 3, first place in the AFC. Although we fell short of a Lombardi, the roster was as good as it gets. That year, McNair at the helm, Derek Mason and Clayton and Heap and Jamal Lewis with a loaded defense was arguably our best roster. Ever. Uh, over the next 12 years from 2006, the Ravens attempted different approaches, but none as evenly balanced, effective, or dominant, including our 2012 Super Bowl year. I feel as though EDC is Ozzy 2006, literally. Uh, we Ravens fans would like to think he's different and will bring a new philosophy. Nope. Uh, no, yeah, no. Yeah, there's, the philosophy is the same. It's the same, but let's keep going. He said, uh, I asked you to walk with me to 2006 because I want you to think of the resemblances of that roster to, the, to that of the last four years. EDC has gone through four Madden off-seasons and has attempted his own version of 2006 each time. The addition of Roquan Smith seems to confirm the primary focus as follows. Number one, power run. Two, tight end-centric pass game. Three, defense, defense, defense. Four, special teams. That's it? Yeah, hey, you, you, you got it. That's it. You're right. You're right. He said, my question, with wide receiver being a fan favorite discussion as an area of weakness, that and the premier teams of the NFL uh, all having pass heavy offenses, is this still a winning formula? And what was the best roster in Ravens history? Till next time, God bless. Appreciate that. That's a, that's a fun question right there. Is this still a winning formula? Yes, for the regular season. It is for the regular season. Regular season, Ravens philosophy, hey, it's fine. It's fine. But playoffs, that's where it gets a little scary. Now, what was the best roster in Ravens history? Oof. Mm. I, I can't say 2019. I think, I think 29 was the, I'm, I was going to say 29. I think 2019, it was the, the, the biggest overachieving roster. Because um, they just, oof, that was crazy. Um, twenty twenty one. They did a a good job of building the roster. Everybody got hurt, so that kind of messed everything up. Um, twenty eleven, twenty eleven, twenty twelve. They they had some nice little rosters now, man. They had some nice little rosters on both sides of the ball. Um, because they had play. I remember Willis McGet. No, Ricky Williams. Yeah, the, the the Ricky Williams when he was on it. Yeah, twenty twenty eleven was nice, man. But yeah, twenty twelve was nice too. Cause that's when they added uh, Jacoby Jones, man. So I don't know. That that that's a that's a really good question. That's that's one that I would like really really uh, have to think about. Cause Ray Ravens done they they done had some rock. They done had some real rough rosters, but they they done had some nice ones uh, from time to time too. So that's that's a really tough question. But it was fun. Yeah, this feels like a dream.